because the focus of talk in these modules, in the previous modules, in, in the coming few modules, our focus will remain on intonation. We are exploring the relationship between intonation and gender. So, the main thing is intonation. Let's in this module explore what is intonation. Intonation is use of pitch patterns to convey meaning. We have said it conveys meaning. How it conveys meaning? Through variation of pitch. If you vary pitch, you convey different meaning. When we speak naturally, in a natural style, not in an artificial style, we feel our voice either continually rising or continually falling, or sometimes rising, sometimes falling. These patterns, these patterns are called pitch of voice. And change in pitch of voice changes the meaning of the utterance. Pitch is not linked with individual sounds or words. It operates at chunks of speech. By chunks of speech, I mean the whole class, the whole sentence. It is not related with individual words or individual sound. It operates at chunks of speech and brings change in meaning of the entire chunk. It does not affect the literal meaning, the basic, the dictionary meaning of the words in the utterance or in the chunk. No, it has nothing to do with that. It operates at a higher layer and that layer is upon the uh, spread upon the whole utterance and it is at that layer where pitch adds meaning to the utterance. Pitch varies uh, if you want to see physically how pitch works on utterance you can experience it through your own audio recording at mobiles. See how pitch varies. You can observe it. So I am talking about that pitch variation. Pitch varies across an utterance continuously, syllable by syllable. We note shift. Now this is part of phonology, syllable. And I hope that because you are students of BS Applied Linguistics, so you might have studied all these things in your course on phonetics and phonology. So for the moment, I ignore its explanation, its structure, etc. here. So pitch, now see, it operates at utterance level. Now utterance is divided into syllables. So it operates syllable by syllable, bit by bit, if in common language we say, syllable by syllable. We note shift in pitch at those syllables which are more prominent. When it varies from syllable to syllable, some syllables become more prominent than the others. And these are those syllables which are stressed, which carry stress, prominence. Prominence is called, in general terms, prominence is called stress. Now see, this is an utterance. It is written in such a way that you understand how pitch rises and falls and uh, in which syllables you see that uh, it, uh, 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 we find prominence and which syllables don't have prominence or any kind of stress. She is my sister, not my cousin. This is the utterance. Now she, she is my sister, not my cousin. 
So these uh, syllables, sis and first syllable of cousin, they are more prominent. They show change in pitch. The use of pitch in a language is called tone. Usually we use both terms as similar, pitch and tone. And uh, sometimes I would also be uh, following this tradition. But see, there is a great difference. Pitch is not tone. Pitch is sound frequency. This is something technical. Now, we would avoid that technicality here. Just remember that your pitch is sound frequency. How that sound frequency is calculated? and in which uh, unit we show it, uh, students of physics, etc. know these things. Okay. The use of pitch, how we use this pitch to convey different meaning, that is called tone. And the patterns of these tones, this is called, uh, that, we, that we make to convey meaning, those patterns of tones are called intonation. So, pitch defines tone and tones define intonation. This is their interrelationship. In some languages, tone is used to create new words because we are talking about use of tone. So, in some languages, tone is used to create new words. In English, you use prefixes or suffixes to create new words. For example, you have a word kind, you add prefix un before it, unkind, you get a new word. But in tone languages, words are made, new words are made by changing tone. Chinese and African languages are tone languages. Such languages are called tone languages because of this. In English and many European languages, Tone does not create words. It conveys unstated meanings. Pitch pattern is called tone and use of tone for expressing discourse meaning is called intonation. This is summary of all the points which I have explained so far. Now here discourse meaning. This term is purposefully used here knowingly used here to differentiate the meaning conveyed by tone from dictionary meaning. It does not convey dictionary meaning. It conveys discourse meaning, the meaning that is related with talk, talk that is going on in some social context. It is not easy, however, to tell how much tone adds to the meaning of a chunk of speech. Chunk of speech that is longer than an utterance, we call it chunk of speech. And the term discourse is used for it. Okay. Now, how much meaning is contributed to discourse by tones? We cannot isolate it. This is quite impossible. Some linguists relate tones with attitudes and emotions. There are certain opinions. What kind of contribution tones make to meaning? One opinion is that tones are related with attitudes and emotions. They convey emotional meanings. They convey uncertainty. They convey positivity, negativity, your interest, your hatred, your surprise, your shock etc. But no single emotion or attitude can be attached with a tone. It can be interpreted, the same tone can be interpreted differently by different people. Some people may, may be offended by your tone uh, and they would directly say that your tone was not appropriate. So this is, the hearer will determine, this is the point. Your hearer will determine the meaning, what was conveyed to that person. A statement with rising tone indicates happiness 
if it carries wide smile. Now see here another thing is involved because in speech you are visible, you are present at a particular place, at a particular time with a particular person or persons. So you are visible, so your speech, your talk is also visible and it is not only your tone, your pitch variation, rather your gestures, your facial expressions, non-verbal cues which also add meaning to tones. Now a tone with rising pitch will be taken as happiness if there is wide smile with it. And if there is light smile, just lips are spread with rising tone. It may be a kind of suspense, it may be kind of surprise. So, the meaning would be changed. That's why we said this is difficult to isolate meaning contributed by the tone. So, there are as such other paralinguistic factors, paralinguistic, those factors which uh, which are part of language, which support our language to convey certain meaning. So, we conclude in English, tone adds meaning to the whole utterance, not to individual words. One, tone does not change meaning of words. Same tone conveys different attitudes and different emotions with different non-verbal signals are key.